your Josh the Bull Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 worst wrestling pay-per-view matches of 2021. There's been some good pay-per-view matches this year, and then there's been some mediocre, and then there's been some downright awful matches that have taken place this year, man. Uh, it's been a crazy year for wrestling. We had to deal with the pandemic at the beginning of the year, then we started to get fans back. We got some epic returns like CM Punk and, and Daniel Bryan going to AEW like we had some some pretty cool moments you know what I'm saying and uh it's just one of those type of things where it's like wrestling as a whole this year has had its highs it's definitely had its lows so we're gonna check this out see what parts unknown has on their list of uh worst matches of 2021 appreciate all the love and support Let's get right into this video, man. Gosh, there were some good wrestling matches in 2021, weren't there? Just a quick note that my list of favorite matches that's on PFK right now, you should go and check it out, didn't include Hangman versus Danielson's ridiculous 60-minute Broadway Fantastic because I wrote match. it before that happened. Just know that it would have made it because holy cowboy S-word. He landed on his feet. Look yeah. at him, like cowboys do. Anyway, I'm sad to inform you that not every wrestling match was as good as my top 10. In fact, quite the opposite. Some were either a waste of time, laughably produced, or the old classic, a slap in the face with a giant clown glove stuffed with rotten eggs and piss. To close oh, out wow. what's honestly <laughs> been a pretty rubbish year, we're running down the most rubbish wrestling matches that people had to pay their hard-earned money to watch. I'm Adam Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and here are my 10 worst pay-per-view matches of 2021. And hey, subscribe! Make that your New Year's resolution. Otherwise, the, the matches in 2022 will be just as bad. The only way you can stop that from happening is by subscribing. Yeah, subscribe Guaranteed. Uh, Chairman. Not a guaranteed. Number 10, Braun Strowman versus Elias. Fast lane. Hey, do you guys remember the Braun Strowman is a dumb dumb storyline between the Monster Among Men and mm -hmm. Shane McMahon? That was a WrestleMania feud, you guys, culminating with an admittedly very impressive spot that seems to have finally slain the sweaty dragon at Shane McMahon's omnipresence on WWE programming. Anyway, the storyline basically consists of Shane coming out and saying, Hudur! at a confused and yeah. angry Braun, then dodging a fight, and it kept happening and happening and happening. Part of the filler used to stretch this hot glop of nothing out for literal months of all of our lives was Braun Strowman versus Elias, Shane's music-tinged heavy who was also shackled by the ankle to Jackson f Riker at the time. Elias, where have you gone? No one benefited from this four minutes of dreck. Not Strowman, mired in an awful storyline. Not Elias, who got jobbed all the way out. And not Shane, because he's sentient spam. Number nine, Dewdrop versus... Yeah, that, that match, that, that was just like... You could have found any other reason for them, for Shane and and Braun at the time to feud, and it was just like, oh, you're a big dumb dumb, uh, like, all right, bro. Zelina Vega, Crown this, Jewel. Yeah, ah, WWE's legacy of bad things in the name Ooh, of Saudi money awful. continued to pace with Crown Jewel, which was annoyingly, from a show quality perspective, pretty darn fine. Heartbreaking that, between the main, the opener, and the very good indeed women's triple threat, the show was a giant step up from past indignities. However, there was at least one stinker on the card, courtesy oh of Dewdrop versus Zelina Vega to crown the first ever Queen's Crown, the Crown Queen of Crown Jewels in the Queen's crap. Just call it Queen of the Ring, Jesus wept. Honestly, this match is partially on the list, not just because it was bad and it was, with Dewdrop randomly wrestling heel for no reason and with no build-up, but it's also here to talk about how bewilderingly bad the entire tournament was, yeah. with the matches given an insulting lack of ring time, both compared to the King of the Ring matches and matches in general. Bell to bell, totally every single match's runtime in the entire tournament added up came to 19 minutes and 20. That's awful. 19 minutes out of a whole tournament. you telling me that's all they were? It's 19 minutes. That's truly awful. That was, they booked this, the women's side of it so poorly. 19 minutes. That's all y'all wanted to give them. Total. And that's why we got the end product as it was. It was awful. Four seconds, an average of two minutes and 46 seconds per match. Bleak that in the year of our Lord 2021. Number eight, the pizza thing, Survivor Series. Oh, LWW yeah. has really stepped up their huckster game this year, haven't they? Presenting to the god of crowbarred capitalist content like a cat in deep heat. Don't get me wrong, WWE hasn't been cool in decades, but there's something especially dispiriting about the intro package to Survivor Series, the second oldest pay-per-view on WWE's books, no less, being a trailer for Red Notice. Vince uh... grumbling to himself about eggs, Xavier Woods hawking water from Nestle, one of the world's most notoriously shady companies, the army of the dead stuff, which will f***ing get to. Oh. 
we cannot forget about the army of the dead. Oh my god. Then there's this. A pointless, heatless mess of Pratt falling and pizzas. A battle royal ostensibly to celebrate 25 years of The Rock, but in actuality just a platform for wrestlers to point at some pizza, cross their eyes, smile, zany antics. I'm just so tired all of the oh, time. I legitimately can't remember who won the match, and I refuse to look it up in case the street profits reach through my monitor and slowly push an entire pepperoni through my eyeball. Number seven, the women's tag team turmoil match, WrestleMania 37. Let me just prime my hypocrisy cannons. Remember a few entries ago when I ragged on the Queen's Crown tournament for being too short? Well, WWE sure as hell overcorrected at WrestleMania, didn't they? Bringing us a women's tag team turmoil match that went 15 minutes, which felt like 19. I the forgot only thing about I can that match. From the entire thing is that Mandy Rose slipped and fell on her bum walking down to the ring. Something that affected us so deeply it changed her hair color and one of the NXT Women's Championship. It was so boring it almost broke WrestleMania. Even fans being in attendance for the first time in over a year couldn't give it any juice. A drab parade yeah, of quick matches, almost match. no spots <laughs> to speak of. And over the course of the two-night WrestleMania, Tamina wrestled a total of half an hour, more than all of the Queen's Crown competitors wow. combined. Please, WWE, is there not a middle ground between a five-minute tournament final and half an hour of Tamina? Please, WWE, <laughs> is there not? Number six, Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair, SummerSlam. Bloody hell, though. WWE. This, yeah. This has to go on that list, man. They, uh, I'm, st uh, they did Bianca Belair so dirty. I'm sorry. There's a better way to have gotten the belt from Becky Lynch and not ruining someone's championship run is the way to do it. That's just my personal opinion. WWE's incomprehensible booking of their women's division has been a real story of this year. And in one of the biggest f cues to their fans in recent memory, this happened at yeah. SummerSlam. Now, to be clear, the concept of having beloved anti-hero Becky Lynch returning, doubling down on the obnoxiousness that her character already had before she left to make a little Rollinch, and turning heel right in the middle of a welcome home parade on one of the biggest shows of the year, that's a fun and interesting idea. And indeed, Big Time Bex has been great since they yeah. clarified it was a heel turn, but God damn, did they not make that clear at SummerSlam itself. Becky Lynch returned, cheap shot at Bianca Belair, and ended her unstoppable run post WrestleMania in 26 seconds. WWE have handled the EST with care since then, but this felt like a huge slap in the face, making Bianca seem like a rookie for the sake of a brief pop. And there's legitimately no reason why this couldn't have been a full match with an actual narrative that clearly demonstrated Becky cheating to win a potentially great story handled in the worst possible way. Number five, the barbed wire exploding ring death match revolution. Sorry, guys, but I mean, yeah, sorry. I yeah, that I didn't watch the match, but I've seen clips of that barbed wire explosion. It, it did not go the way they wanted it to go. I can tell you that now. AEW are currently the hottest fire they've ever been thanks to a combination of huge defections, barnstorming matches, and consistent long-term booking slowly but surely paying off. But that is not to say that everything's been smooth sailing this year, with AEW still trailing WWE in terms of basic production. For the most part, it almost works in AEW's favor. It's less micromanaged, there's fewer camera cuts, the lack of a glossy sheen makes it feel a bit more real, a bit more intense. But sometimes it blows up in the company's face, especially when what they planned doesn't blow up in the company's face. At Revolution, Kenny Omega fought Marks in a barbed wire exploding ring death match with the stip being that if the timer expired the ring would explode the match itself was pretty good lots of stupid barbed wire ring rope splody spots and <laughs> after the match kenny and friends left moxley for dead in the ring eddie kingston turned face to save his best friend the highest of drama the countdown reached zero and then oh no oh absolutely no though yeah, genuinely was... it's one of the worst bits of wrestling production mm. maybe ever and it's not about casting blame <laughs> it's just a simple fact this is f embarrassing. The yeah. only time to date that the ending of an AEW pay-per-view has been booed down by its fans, ruining what could have been a moment of the year. Sometimes a match is only as good as its finish, and this is one of the worst finishes of the year. It's yeah, for sure. <laughs> it was just sparklers and smoke. Huh? <laughs> Not the worst, though. Number four, Roman Reigns versus Demon Finn Balor, Extreme Rules. F*** me, purple. <laughs> Talk about a great match that no one will ever remember because they're too busy pissing themselves, laughing at one of the worst finishes yeah. since that Hell in a Cell match. A finish so monumentally embarrassing <laughs> and character-destroying that it might... I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> the God stepped into that match. God helped. <laughs> in the way of a cameraman unscrewing one of the turnbuckles. <laughs>
just have put an end to Demon Finn for good old Yeller style. Much like the exploding ring match, the actual meat and potatoes of Reigns versus Balor was really good because yeah, both was. men are really good. Lots of big spots, crazy athleticism. Fantastic. And then there's this. Suddenly the lights go red. Finn starts flopping on the ground like a salmon with a cattle prod up its ass. Think hulking up. But if the thing hulking up is a Newcastle man on the floor of a train after passing out from eight pints of Nuki Brown, the Duracell demon pops up, sets Roman up for a coup de gras when the top rope kayfabe breaks and the demon lands on his stupid face, eats a spear, main roster undefeated streak over. How do you get something so wrong so yeah. hard? Number three, Alexa Bliss versus Shayna Baszler. Ooh. He is putting some good ones on this list. Matches that I have genuinely forgotten about because they're so goddamn bad. Alexa Bliss, Shayna Baszler, awful. Just awful. Oh my, this match legitimately upsets me because of what they did to it. Alexa Bliss. She pretty much took the Fiend's gimmick and now we're supposed to believe a super-powered demon chick is supposed to be beating a former MMA competitor? What are we doing? A hell in a cell. Spoiler, the rest of this list is going to be WWE trying and failing to do spooky bullshit. You've been warned. Alexa Bliss has had a hell of a 2021, from her beloved pig Larry Steve passing away to having all of the internet's worst wrestling fans coming after her for air quotes, stealing the Fiend's gimmick. If your reaction to WWE dropping the ball on the Fiend was to go after a performer just doing the job asked of her, have a long think as to whether or not yeah. wrestling might be too academic for you. Anyway, most of what WWE had Alexa doing this year was dreadful. The result of an eight-year-old being tasked with rewriting oh. Beetlejuice in 20 minutes. The match with Randy at Fastlane, the match with Eva at SummerSlam, the winking doll, all of it a hodgepodge of hackneyed horror tropes, no actual substance, Cringe. story, or game plan. The second worst of them all was this, Alexa versus one of the greatest and most legit NXT champions yep. in history, Shayna Baszler. All of this sucked, from Shayna being scared of the fact that Alexa Bliss is famously double-jointed, <sighs> to Reginald's oh no scary horseplay at ringside, to a laughably sh possession of Nia yeah, Jax, none of which, of course, played awful. into the finish of the match in any way, shape, or form. Don't worry though, it does get worse. Number two, The Fiend versus Randy Orton, WrestleMania 37. Awful One too. year on from the Firefly Funhouse. This is what we get. This is what we deserve. After months of The Fiend stalking Randy, Randy setting The Fiend on fire, Alexa prophesying his return like the Hot Topic Silver Surfer, The Fiend returning like a burnt pizza roll. This is the payoff. <laughs> the Fiend appears out of a jack-in-the-box, which you know what could have been great, but then gets distracted by Alexa looking like a mannequin of Hela from Thor Ragnarok yeah. melting in the Florida heat. Randy hits the RKO. That's your lot. Five minutes. One promo aside, that was a wrap on Bray Wyatt in WWE, yep. one year removed from the Funhouse, one of the best things WWE ever produced. What a clear statement. Yep. They had no f***ing idea what they had in their hands. Mm -hmm. What a waste of time, money, fan investment, raised creativity. I mean, when John Cena's dad cuts a promo on how shit your booking of a match is, that is saying something. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm sure someone out there liked it. Maybe Randy's kids. I'm just tired of That shit was awful. That shit was just awful. Bray deserves so much better. Oh, my God. That waste of time. Waste of everybody's time, man. It didn't lead to absolutely nothing. All that buildup. All of that for him to just lose to a fucking RKO. Because he got fucking... He got mesmerized by the person that he recruited. Hoping for the best. And number one, those Zombies, oh. WrestleMania yeah. Backlash. Oh, Army yeah. of the Dead is a terrible film. Army of the Dead sponsored WrestleMania Backlash. That sponsorship took the form of zombies appearing on the Thunderdome screens. Okay, that's a bit clever. Zombies appearing backstage in the locker rooms. Okay, that's some cornball shit, but yeah. WWE has done worse. And then WWE did worse. The Miz fought Damian Priest in the Lumberjack match, and all of those Lumberjacks were zombies, and all the wrestlers had to pretend to be afraid of them. It's worse than Robocop. It's worse than Chucky. It's the worst example of WWE being a baby show for babies. John Morrison did the parkour stuff with zombies. The Miz got killed and eaten by zombies. Get zombies, bro. In 2021, someone came up with that and thought that shit was cool. Huh. Okay. 
seconds after suffering a major real life injury and wrestling on like a f***ing hero. Damien Priest continued his run as WWE's pop culture liaison after the Bad Bunny stuff. What's worse is that literally every other match on the Backlash card was great. Rain Cesaro, yeah, Ripley Charlotte Asker, Lashley Strowman McIntyre, all shown up by the presence of this clown car pootling down the ramp, exploding and dominating the conversation. The E in WWE stands for entertainment. WWE have produced some absolute classics mm -hmm. this year on almost every single pay-per-view they put out. There has been a potential match of the year Maybe. candidate and then there's also been mm -hmm. one of these. Happy New Year, everyone. Can't wait to do this again next year. And that's the thing, man. They, it, it's so crazy. I have uh, Cesaro versus Roman Reigns as one of my favorite matches of the year. I put that in my top five. And then in the same pay-per-view, you had that bullshit. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's like they have, it's like they, they have to have a bullshit match that makes no sense after putting on at least one match of the year contender. It's just dumb. It's just absolutely dumb. I don't, I don't know who will be booking some of these matches. I don't know why some of these matches happen, but they, it's like they have to have something cringe and or stupid on one of their shows. I will never understand it. Never, never understand it. But comment down below. Let me know what was the worst match for you guys this year in AEW and WWE. Hell, it doesn't matter any other promotion. What was the worst match for you this year of 2021? I'm gonna have to give it to the zombies one. Yeah, the zombie one. It, it I could I could just excuse the the Alexa Bliss one as you know as much as I can tolerate, but the zombie one that takes it to a whole new level of absolute cringe. I'm sorry, so but comment down below, let me know what's your worst match of wrestling, worst wrestling match of this year. It doesn't matter what company it's in. But uh, appreciate all the love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.